Yo, 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 you made it. It's your favorite comic on the rise. Back to season two of the Comedy Chatter Podcast. You've been searching for a pod that talks all things comedy, as well as kicking with some of the dopest comics in the game? Then this is the podcast for you. What's the deal? What's the deal? What's going on, good people? How's everybody doing? How's everybody feeling? What is really going on? Welcome to another episode of the Comedy Chatter Podcast. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know the first thing y'all saying, any of my loyal listeners, I know the first thing they saying is, where the hell you been? I get it, I get it, I understand. I done had a whole lot going on. I've heard all types of stuff. Oh, man, baby, he's done. Maybe he's not doing anymore. But believe me, I couldn't be further from the truth. I am back with an all-new episode of the Comedy Chatter Podcast. I am your host. For those of y'all who don't know me and this is your first listen, I am Melding Williams. And I'm back. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Things happen. Things happen in life. You know, we got a whole lot of stuff going on. I, I pride myself on staying busy. And so, to be totally honest with you, man, I've just been really, really busy. I haven't had a chance to interview uh, any uh, of the uh, comedians that I've uh, wanted to uh, interview in the past few months. And that is, like I said, because I just had a whole bunch of other stuff going on. But without a doubt, man, uh, well, you know, I'm still going to get back out there. It's been a while since I've actually been on stage, to be honest, too, man. You know, so anybody that knows me knows that, you know, like I said, I'm a, I'm a, a huge fan of stand up comedy. I'm a huge fan of doing this. I'm a huge fan of being out there and this, that, and the other. And so with that said, I take it seriously. So, yeah, I just had to, um, to be totally honest with you, I've been on a nice, a nice hiatus, man. I looked and I noticed that my last episode was in October. Yeah, last episode was October, like 1028. That was my man Tyler Craig. Shout out to him. I got a chance to see him last night as well on stage, man. At the um, He uh, did the Browner Brothers hair show uh, comedy show. That's always a big comedy show in Atlanta. So I was there last night. I got a chance to see him perform. Man, man shout out to you, Tyler Craig. You got down. You tore the stage up. My man Sean Larkins, who's also done the uh, pod, he was there. He tore the stage up. Rodney Perry, who's also done the pod, he was there. He tore the stage up. I think he headlined, closed it out. But it was a really good show, man. And that's what made, kind of you know gave me the juice. You know, put the the, you know, the juices flowing. Say, man, you got to get back on the podcast. You got to get back on stage. You know, I know you didn't have a nice little you know uh, time off, but yeah, it's time for you to get back to what you what you love and what you do best. And so I told myself, yes, let me go ahead and hop on this. Uh, podcast this is episode 11 by the way season 2 episode 11 and um yeah this is kind of uh you know the uh final episode uh as you'd have it the final episode of season 2 i know it took a while i know it took a while to get here but yeah this is the final episode of season 2 and after this i'm going to jump into season 3 really really hard uh i'm going to like i said i got i got some i got some stand up comics that have told me hey i'm talking about straight from their mouth straight from the horse's mouth if they want to come and get down on the podcast man i've already uh, kind of made a couple of posts and let y'all know uh who they are but uh just just yeah just just stay tuned man stay tuned just just know one thing i'm not going anywhere man this last one will be season 2 in the books and after that we going right into season 3 so yes uh, due to the fact that, you know, like I said, usually y'all know my M.O., you know what I'm saying? I do shout outs. I do back in the day. I do all of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? I usually give a comedy, you know, a little, a little bit of my comedy, uh, you know, excerpt of my comedy on stage. So y'all hear what it is that I do. And then I go into my interview. Scratching all of that this time. I'm scratching all of that. For the final episode of season two, I decided to do something that's near and dear to my heart. Like I told you, I'm a fan of comedy. I don't just, you know what I'm saying? I'm a fan of comedy. So I'm also a history, you know, historian too. Like, you know what I'm saying? When I, when I, um, started doing comedy, I started doing comedy late in my life. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people started 15, 16, 17, 20. I started stand up when I was 30 and people to this day be like, man, shit, I'm surprised you didn't start when you was, when you was young in high school because you used to have us cracking up then. As I always think, tell myself, like, man, like, my life would be so much different if I started earlier. But, yeah, I didn't, you know, get the courage and, you know, th- thought I had the skill to, to do it until I was 30 years old. So so here I am, you know. But to, with all that said, 
I was letting you know that I'm basically, you know, I've been messing with comedy, even though I didn't get started at 30. I've been messing with comedy for a long time. And what I mean by messing with it is just kind of studying comics, um, you know, watching all the old shows and the, 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 the you know, the, the sets. You know what I'm saying? Like whenever they be on Johnny Carson and whenever they would be on. Yeah, I'm a Johnny Carson baby. You know what I'm saying? That's how far I go back. So with that said, I decided, you know what? You know, we got a lot of comedy specials. Netflix done took taken over with the comedy specials. I remember when I was coming up, it was HBO. If you got an HBO special, that was it. They were they were the comedy folk. But now Netflix has taken over. And so I told myself, you know what I'm going to do? For the last episode of season two, I'm going to go ahead and rank my favorite comedy specials. Now, emphasis on the word my. You understand? Because, you know, sometimes you do a list and the motherfuckers, oh, man, you crazy as hell. That, that shit ain't, I can't believe you ain't got this on your list. I'm like, look, motherfucker, I said my. You, you understand? So this is my list. I got 10 comedy specials. These are the comedy specials that I, that, that are my, like I said, top 10. And, hey, I'll put them against anybody else's list, to be honest. But you fight me on these motherfuckers. You know, I got some I got some classic ones on here. And like I said, of course, you know, out of 10, I'm not going to probably be able to have, you know, all of the ones that everybody else is talking about. But these are comedy specials that I could could put in, like, DVD. I could pull up stream, whatever, right now and just listen to and watch and love. Every single time. Great, great watch every single time. And that's why I figured that, you know, like these are my favorite. And I went ahead and ranked these. You understand? So that's what I'm going to do. That's, that's going to be the whole episode, man. I'm going to give y'all my, you know, I'm going to give y'all my critiques on these uh, comedy specials. I'm going to, you know, so I'm going to do them, like I said, like a countdown. I'm going to start from 10 and go all the way to 1. I'm going to tell you who they are. I'm going to tell you, you know, the title of them. And then I'm going to give you the year that they dropped. And that'll also be like a sort of interesting, you know, perspective just to see how, um, to see how the years kind of, you know, go back and forth in terms of how long uh, I've been uh, admiring stand-up comedy. So, so yeah, that's, that's what I plan on doing here, man. I would be remiss if I didn't, um, drop this, you know, drop this, uh, portion of into my podcast, um, we got this, uh, you know, got got this new year started and everything, and um, you know things have happened throughout this new year, but one of the most significant things that have happened since my last podcast is the death of Kobe Bryant. Now, like I said, I'd be remiss if I, I know you know happy t- you know uh, you know, podcast. I'm usually a real happy dude. I talk about all types of stuff really, but I try to you know keep everything happy, but. I'm going to keep it all the way real with lady with, with you ladies and gentlemen. This uh affected me in a way that I did not think that it would because I'm going to be totally honest with y'all, I wasn't the biggest Kobe Bryant fan. Now keep in mind, I'm not talking about personally. I didn't know him personally, never shook his hand, never, you know, talked to him, walk with him, none of that. But I was just talking about in terms of basketball. Basketball, I'm not a Laker guy. Everybody knows me. I'm a Michael Jordan, I'm a Bulls guy. So Kobe was really, you know, like he was just a, you know, a cat that I respected the hell out of because he could play some ball, but I, I wasn't a big fan. But when that shit happened and I just so happened to ironically, I'm talking about coincidentally, whatever, however, whatever you want to call it, be in Los Angeles that morning. I woke up in Los Angeles that morning on a, on a layover uh, with my job and that happened. And I it, it was un believable like people texting and saying it and i was just like yeah right you know you out of your mind I'm, I'm in la so i haven't heard anything about it and slowly but surely i just started hearing more and more and within within an hour it was confirmed and i was like holy shit like this is not real the fact that you guys are telling me that you know kobe bryant just died in a helicopter crash this is it's, it's, it's unreal but it did happen, and um, to to pour salt all the way in the wound, his uh, you know baby girl was on there with him, and you know like I said, this is just this is some unfortunate shit. Uh, but I took it like this. I took it like this. Like I said, comedy is one of those things where 
like especially for comedians like should I, I I'll take that angle with comedians like no matter what happens no matter the way sh- how shit affects you you're still supposed to try to you know shed some type of light on things you know what I'm saying that's why people come see you because they want to laugh you know what I'm saying and so you know, like I said I, I man that that day I was I was I was I was heartbroken I really was I was like damn I'm not even a fan of this guy but for that to happen to a, to to a cat that I you know watched grow up his entire career and who's just one year younger than me like it, just, it, just hit, it hit me so so um so yeah man um comedians you know even we imagine some of the comedians that had to perform that night there were Kobe Bryant fans. They probably, that Sunday night that that happened, it was some comedians that loved Kobe Bryant so much that were getting on stage to perform that night. So us comedians have to do a really, really good job of either compartmentalizing things or, you know, getting on stage and sharing them and dealing with them, whatever it is they got to do. But, you know, we have to, you know, you know, the show must go on is, is, is the uh, old uh, cliche. And so... That's what I, um, you know, got from it, man. Like I said, just, you know, kind of briefly talking about it and summing it up, man. I got from it that, you know, Kobe Bryant, of all people, would want the show to go on. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, he got his, he got, he's got his baby girl with him. I know he's going to miss all of the rest of them. But he's got his baby girl with him. And like I said, as sad as that shit is for us to deal with, hey, man, he, he had a hell of a life. And, uh, you know, like he, if he was still here, he would tell like the, all the people that still had to play Lakers still got to play. You know what I'm saying? So I know they postponed the Clipper game, but after, right after that, they got to get right back out there and play. And Kobe, you know, the best way to honor Kobe is to go out there and play some damn, you know, winning Laker basketball. So, so I just had to touch on that, man. Before I got into get into my list, I had to touch on, you know, losing such a, uh, such a, you know, iconic man an iconic and an iconic figure on the basketball court and then what was even um m- more amazing and 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 great in in terms of talking about this guy's legacy is uh, I saw a story that saw that they showed all of the things that he were, that had done secretly for people like there was this you know story that they put on this like all the stuff that he had done that he didn't go around gloating about and telling all the donations that he had made that he wasn't telling anybody about People were stepping up and saying, Kobe did this for me. Kobe did that for me. Kobe paid for this. Kobe did this. And people was just saying, man, hey, you know, it was just great, great, great cat. And, um, you know, obviously we saw him grow up. You know, we saw him grow up before our very eyes. He got to the NBA at 17, 18 years old. You know what I'm saying? So we saw him grow up. He, You know, a couple of rough spots, stuff that we should not harp on. You know what I mean? Shouldn't harp on his rough spots. Same way I don't want nobody to harp on my shit. You know what I'm saying? Like the bottom line is, I, I you know, I, I, I um, consider myself a good dude at 42 right now, and I didn't had a whole bunch of rough spots. But believe me, I got I've done more good than harm to this world. Kobe Bryant did more good than harm to this world. Believe me. All right, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we're gonna keep this thing, like I said, right going. Like I said, I don't have nothing, I don't have other stuff this time. I don't have no segments or nothing. I'm gonna get right into my list, and I can't wait for people to, you know, hear the list because I already know they're gonna be like, oh man, which means you don't got this on there, you don't got that on there. Look, goddammit, this is my list. So, without further ado, my top 10 all time stand up comedy specials. Number 10. You guys heard of Whippy Goldberg? All right, well, Whippy Goldberg did a Broadway show. She started, you know, you know, Broadway in New York. She did a a one a, a one man. You know, one, you know, she's a woman, but they call it one man show, right? So it's just her, and you know, just just the person they on stage on the big old stage, and they just giving it to you, like in terms of more comedy. They sing, they do all kinds of stuff, but it's just basically them like sharing their you know, talent with an audience, with a Broadway audience. Well, Whippy Goldberg, the, the great iconic legend Whippy Goldberg, did one of these in 84, and she did 156 shows all the way up to 80, 1985. And it was going so well that HBO decided, shit, we're going to record one of these. So HBO did an HBO comedy special with Whippy Goldberg called Direct from Broadway. 
and it dropped in 85. And man, I'm telling you, that shit blew me away when I first saw it for a few reasons. Number one, you know, you know, we, I've had, I've interviewed female comedians. And when we talk about it, you know, the female comedian, it's a tough business to break into. I'm sure for, for females because they're, they're the minority. You know what I'm saying? So it's tough for a woman to just get on stage and say, hey, I'm the funniest motherfucker in here. But Whippy Goldberg, fearless. Fearless when she did this one woman show. All the bits that she did. I'm talking about jumping in the characters. Like going back to herself and the Valley Girl and all type of shit. If you have not seen Whippy Goldberg's direct from Broadway back in 1985 HBO special, Check it out. That's my number 10. That's, that's starting us out. Number 10 comedy special. You got to check it out if you haven't seen it. Number nine. This is one of my personal favorites right here. And I'm talking about it might not make a lot of other people's lists. But when I saw this comedy special, I I, I pretty much recorded it because it was back in VHS days. Like you recorded on the VHS on tape. And I watched that shit every day. And learned it by heart. Learned all the bits. Learned all the songs. Learned everything. Jamie Foxx, straight from the foxhole. Man, I, hey, I'm talking about Jessica. Jessica. I'm talking about everything that he did on that mug. I knew. First of all, Jamie had just, you know, come from it. You know, he was just gotten hot at that point. He did Living Color. You know what I'm saying? Everybody saw that this dude was really talented. He was doing the singing. He was doing that and the other. But I had no idea that he was this kind of beast. You know what I mean? He did it. He recorded it in San Diego. And, hey, man, he came out with the blue blue and black suit on. And, and I'm talking about from start to finish, he destroyed this audience, man. HBO special. It was an HBO special. And Jamie Foxx, straight from the foxhole. If you haven't seen it, run, run to check it out. It might be on YouTube or whatever, but I'm talking about, hey, this right here was my shit. This is when I knew. I was like, man, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, everybody know me. Know I do a lot of singing bits too. I was like, yeah, man, I need to get some sit that shit. I can I can do that. I can I can implement my singing into my comedy. This was the special that told me that I could do that because Jamie Foxx flawlessly put that shit in and then serenaded him at the end of it with the oh man with with the Mary Mary. I mean this 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 comedy special was it for me. I could watch it like I said right now whole thing and perform that shit right with him. So number nine, Jamie Foxx, straight from the foxhole. Number eight, Louis C.K. Fuck all, fuck the controversy. Like this was way before the controversy, by the way. Louis C.K. Shameless, Shameless, two thousand seven. Now, <laughs> Louis C.K. Like I said, he got the controversy going on right now. You know, and from what I'm hearing, you know, he's been, you know, he's jumped back on stage in a few places. May go to the cellar, and he didn't done a couple shows across the country. Just kind of sneaks up on folks. It's hard to come back from the, you know, the, from the controversy that he's come that he's trying to come back from. But um this comedy special right here, this was the first time that I got a chance to see exactly how <laughs> I mean, not just fearless, but this motherfucker, like he he might he might have some fear. Like that's the fun. He might not be fearless. He he might have some fear, but he doesn't show it. Louis CK will talk about any damn thing. He's literally a comedian that would talk about anything. It reminds me of Ricky Gervais hosting the um the uh Golden Globe Awards. Like Ricky Ricky Gervais be up there saying like anything, any shit that come to his head, any like he it, it ain't no like <laughs> it ain't nothing that he'd be like, yeah, no, I can't do that one. Like, no. Gervais is gonna do it. And that's the way it looked like Louis C.K. approached this uh special in 2007. Shameless. He talked about anything. I'm talking about, I'm talking about, he used, like you said, faggot. Like, he'll say anything. Like, he, he said anything. Like nothing was, when he, he said the dude that had the road rage told him to suck a bag of dicks. I was, I was like, really, dog? You? Like, he, he said some shit on there. I was like, man, I would never, I would never even attempt to try this shit on stage. But, hey, Louis C.K. did in this, in this special. 
shameless. That's literally what it was. I'm talking about, <laughs> he talked about his wife giving him the saddest hand job ever. Like he, he, like I said, he literally just tackles shit and, and does it in a way where, you know, like yeah, if he was just chilling with you, like in your crib, I would understand his jokes. I'd be like, okay, this motherfucker crazy. But for him to be on the stage saying some of this shit is unreal and he makes it work. Like his whole demeanor and everything, hey, he, yeah, he makes it work. So, Yes, number eight, Louis C.K. Shameless. Came out in 07. Check it out if need be. Next on the list, number seven, Richard Pryor. Everybody knows how I feel about Richard Pryor. He is the greatest of all time in terms of stand-up for me. Richard Pryor can give it to you any way you want it. I'm talking about impressions, uh, material, um, whatever it is you want, however you want to do a physical comedy, you know what I'm saying? Just sitting there, sitting, sitting down on the, he can sit on a stool, like however you want to, whatever you want to go head up with, Richard Pryor can go there with you. Everybody knows about his transformation from doing, you know, being, trying to be Cosby in the early days to, um, you know, uh, going down to Berkeley and, and discovering who he really was and becoming militant. But all of that stuff together, his ability to tell stories, his ability to, um, you know, like I said, do impersonations, his ability to, you know, observation, you know, his observational comedy is spot on. But the reason why I love um, this uh, Richard Pryor special right here is that it, it, I haven't even said the title of it yet. Richard Pryor live on the Sunset Strip, live on the Sunset Strip, 1982 backstory from what I heard was that. Keep in mind, Richard Pryor, in 1982, Richard Pryor had already had the uh, infamous, um, you know, drug-induced um, accident where, you know, he set himself on fire and, you know, 50% chance to live. If anybody didn't know about this, research this shit. For all you new comedians out here that don't know about this kind of shit, know about Richard, like I'm telling you, man, comedy is not just, comedy is not just, you know, funny games. Like, comedy... Is a lot like you. It's a lot of pain in comedy, and Richard Pryor was the greatest of all time to me because he was able to evoke that pain and he was able to change, you know, to channel that pain and turn it into some of the biggest laughs that I, me personally, have ever had in my life. Like his pain, you know what I'm saying? He he turned it into some of the biggest laughs I've ever had. The way he dealt with it, and live on the Sunset Strip was was that. That that you know what I just said, it was that to perfection. Like the fact that he could you know damn near almost die in a, in an accident that um, grotesque, and then you know come back to and, and hit the stage. And uh, as 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 um, the story goes, he came back you know the first night to do the show and was terrible. I didn't notice. They said the first night he came back, he was terrible. He literally just walked off stage like, hey, man, I just don't have it tonight. I'm, I'm terrible. I'm bombing. My stuff ain't working. And he walked off. The sh- uh, off. And you probably, like after after something like that happens to you, I'm talking about packed house, packed room. After something like that happens to you as a comedian, you're probably not going to get back on stage again. But what Richard, Richard knew, like he knew that, you know, shit, like stand up is what I do. So, he invited everybody back the very next night. The very next night, told everybody to come right back to the Sunset Strip and, you know, come back in there. And he came back the next night and produced what is my number seven uh, stand-up comedy special of all time. It's called Live on the Sunset Strip. And he had the red suit on and the afro. And I'm talking about, I, I literally watched this special a lot of times, like before I'm about to have a performance, like if I know I'm, you know, going, you know, if I'm, if I'm getting on stage Friday or if I'm getting on, I got, you know, a performance coming up or, or an audition or whatever, I watch live on the Sunset Strip just to study how, how, how amazing Richard Pryor was on this particular night when he actually recorded, you know, this special and got it right. So check it out. Number seven on my list, Richard Pryor live on the Sunset Strip. Number six, a comedian that helped change my entire like viewpoint on comedy. Like, you know, like I said, I, I got, you know, heroes. I got, you know, Richard Pryor, you know what I'm saying? I got, 
Eddie Murphy. I got all these guys that I saw coming up. But seeing this guy like changed my whole mindset and my whole viewpoint on stand-up comedy. And he helped me grow as a comedian. And this special that I have at number six was basically him at his very best before he passed away. Mr. Patrice O'Neill, Elephant in the Room. If you guys have not seen Elephant in the Room and you don't know nothing about Patrice, you better, first of all, if you don't know nothing about Patrice and you talking about you do stand-up comedy, hey, like shame on you. Because this dude was a, 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 was a cosmic rocket, basically. He just came like out of nowhere and, and was punching people in the face in terms of stand-up. And then, you know, uh, uh, ultimately he uh, passed away due to complications from diabetes. Um... But this guy was an amazing stand-up comic. I'm talking about just his whole demeanor in terms of comedy. But you always knew that he loved it. He told you, I love, he's always, I love comedy, man. He did. And on this particular night, Elephant in the Room, he even, I saw some interviews where he said, man, I was, everything just clicked that night. Everything, I was, I was, I was on fire. You know what I'm saying? Everything worked. All of his material, all the stuff that he had ever, you know, pretty much talked about, like he was able to do, I mean, his crowd work, everything was sensational on this night. And I'm just so happy, you know, it, you know, like I said, his untimely death, um, you know, rattled me, but um, he left us with this right here, Elephant in the Room. And it's my number six special. You guys got to check it out. Number six on my list, Patrice O'Neal, 2011, Elephant in the Room. All right, so we halfway through now. Number five, number five. <laughs> that is special. It's more of a, it's more of a, uh, you know, documentary, more of a comedy documentary, if you will. Uh, this special, I have to honestly say, first of all, this special changed a lot of shit when it dropped because of before this special. Everybody was basically trying to, like, in terms of comedy, like, you know, whatever to go to comedy, a lot of people were chasing other specials. You were chasing Eddie Murphy Delirious. You were chasing, you know, like, all the other, all these other specials. Now, once, once this special dropped, people start realizing that, shit, I don't have to be by myself, you know, to do a special. I could be like, I could form Voltron. Like, you know, remember, anybody remember Voltron? Like, them five lions? Them five lions was bad as hell by themselves. But when shit got hectic, when shit got tight, hey, them motherfuckers were like, hey, let's come together and form Voltron. Like, shit, form feet and legs. Form arms and torso. And I'll form the head. And Voltron come out there, and like, the whole five lions form one robot. And... When shit got thick, he fought that sword. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That was my shit right there. So that's basically what these four dudes did in order to um in order to produce one of the funniest stand-up comedy specials I'm telling you that I've ever seen. On this particular night, these four dudes that, you know, um ascended from the Deaf Comedy Jam era. Just decided, hey, we're gonna go on tour together, and we don't have to, you know, because I'm sure they was all getting it by themselves. You know what I'm saying? You know, Steve Harvey, he had his own show. Cedric the Entertainer was on his show as a supporting actor. D.L. Hughley had his own show, and Bernie Mac was in all types of movies. So they they had their they was probably filling up, you know what I'm saying, uh, clubs and stuff by themselves. But somebody had the ingenious idea to say, hey man, why don't we all four go out together? And when they did that, they went on a tour that wound up grossing, like, if at one point, it was like the highest grossing comedy tour of all time. So, my number five uh, comedy special is the original Kings of Comedy. with, Like I said, Steve Harvey, Bernie Mac, Cedric the Entertainer, and D.L. Hughley. Man, they, 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 the way they put this motherfucker on was just ingenious. Like I said, four people, all hot, come together. Been on Def Jam. Everybody loved all four of them. So they get on Def Jam. I mean, they get on uh, the, the, the tour together. They they film it in Charlotte, North Carolina, of all places, one night where it just was, you know, everything black. 
and hey dog, it, it, Spike Lee directed it, and it just wound up. And then we got real smart and decided to put this motherfucker in the movie theater. That's where I saw it. I went and saw it in the movie theater. Man, it was selling out every damn time. Every time I tried to go, it was sold out. And I finally got a chance to go, and I'm literally talking about we was falling on the flow up in there. Uh, we was on. We was literally falling on the floor up in there. Me and my cousin went to see it. <laughs> Me and my my boys went to see it, and we was literally on the floor in there off 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 this material. And man, it, dude, the, the original Kings of Comedy still to this day. Still, like I said, all this shit holds up. All these specials I'm giving y'all holds up right now. I can go pop these in right now. I probably got most of them sitting in there. You know, what I'm saying? I can I can go watch them anytime I want. So. So, yes, number five, the original Kings of Comedy. That dropped in 2000, too, by the way. I'm trying to make sure I get y'all the dates so y'all can see all the dates that, you know, where I'm going, <laughs> how, how much I, you know, I, I, I'm going back and forth. And well, my list goes back and forth in terms of the dates because, like I said, you know, I'm a, I'm a comedy buff. That's the, way, that's the way I pride myself. All right, number four. Everybody, you know, goes crazy about Mr. Kevin Hart because Kevin Hart is, without a doubt, a, a, a true rock star of comedy. Like he can, the shit, the shit that he's done in terms of the arenas and all that that he's filled up, and you know, social media and all the stuff that he's done. He's a true rock star of comedy. But the very, very first rock star, I'm talking about rock star, like like the Beatles, of you know what I'm saying? Like his motherfucker couldn't go nowhere. The first rock star of comedy was, without a doubt, Mr. Eddie. Murphy, and this this pick right here, I got it. I got it at number four. I got it at number four. This pick right here is probably going to be a little, you know, like like I said, it's my list. So people are probably thinking I'm going to say delirious. No, my number four pick on my list, and I think this uh, stand up special was better. Was 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 was. I don't want to say by far better, but definitely better than Delirious because it still holds up. I can still watch this one today. Delirious, a lot of the jokes didn't really hold up all that much for me now. Like, I watched it recently, and I was just like, okay, you know, I still can laugh at ice cream. I still can laugh at, you know, his uh, his drunk father, you know, cussing everybody out. But a lot of the other stuff just really doesn't hold up. But, hey, when you watch Eddie Murphy Raw... 1987, Eddie Murphy Raw, we had the purple suit on. Like, like, hey, that one right there can still hold still holds up today. I'm talking about the stuff with relationships, <laughs> the stuff where he was getting in the fight with the Italian dude. Like, I think Raw was a little bit, like I said, I, I dug Raw a little bit more than I did Delirious. And um I think that it's number, like I said, in terms of my list, like it, it, it like I said, all this stuff holds up. Also, the reason why I have him so high is because, like I said, Eddie Murphy was the first rock star. When he popped off on Delirious, like, it would have been tough for anybody to take, like, four years off and go do all these movies and all that and then come back. See, what we asking Eddie to do right now, like, Ed, remember, Eddie been off doing stand-up for I don't know how long, but now he's finally saying, hey, I'm going to come back and do stand-up. You know how hard that's going to be for Eddie? Like, I, we know, I know he's great and all that, but stand-up ain't no joke. He's going to have to go to, to all the way back to the... He's going to have to go all the way back to the bottom and build up a build up an act, which is what I'm hearing that he's doing, which is good. But, hey, 1982, I think, was delirious. Hey, Raw didn't come out to 87. So five years off from him, like, you know, of course, just being like one of the hottest, the biggest movie stars in the world and doing all this, you know, movies and TV and shit. He came back and did Raw. That's how that's how dope Raw was to me. Raw was the shit. Like so so without a doubt, man, hey, that's my number four. That's my number four comedy special right there. That hit the movie theaters and all that too. That was in James for them to put that in the movies. Eddie Murphy Raw. Shit still holds up today. Very, very funny stuff. Number three. Now number three. This one is, from, from what I'm hearing, from what I've been hearing, a lot of people are calling this one of their one of the funniest stand-up comedy, comedy specials of all time. And it's crazy that, you know, they're calling it that 
because it's so freaking new. Like I, I mean, I'm going all the way back. I'm going all the way back with the, you know, obviously with my list. You you know you heard shit from '82 and all of that and the other, but this um, comedy special dropped 2019. This shit came out last year, but hey, it was so it was done so brilliantly. It was done so well, and it tackled like the topics. Remember how I told you the to Louis C.K. like just kind of he'll talk about anything. This brother will as well. Like this brother will get on stage and literally tackle some shit that other comedians wouldn't dare tackle. LGBTQ type shit. Um, you know, the the N word, like calling people names. Like eh, this motherfucker will tackle anything. And he literally did in um this comedy special. This is the third comedy special on my list. Number three, Dave Chappelle, Sticks and Stones. He recently won a Grammy for this uh, bad baby because uh, uh, what he usually does is he, you know, like I think he won a Grammy before with uh, his one of his uh, last Netflix specials. But basically, he um, and Chris Rock does this as well. But uh, he, um, they, you know, after they put the Netflix special out, then they record it for an album as an album as well. And so, yeah, he just won a Grammy for you know outstanding comedy album for Sticks and Stones. Man, when I when I watched, everybody was talking shit about it, and I finally watched it, and it held. I was like, "Wow!" Like, like this this dude would literally get on there and talk about, like, so he's one of the most fearless comedians that I've ever. I'm talking about that I've ever witnessed, especially now, like with with the cancel culture and with the shit that people can say and the stuff that people can do. As you saw, they you know pulled up old tweets of Kevin Hart and took a, took a job that he wanted bad as hell. Like you know what I'm saying. Dave Chappelle don't care about none of that. Like, Dave Chappelle already showed you motherfuckers. He don't care about none of that. He'll leave $50 million on the table and go to Africa and just say, y'all can have that shit. You know what I'm saying? That's the way Dave is. So, this, like, you know, there's one word. One word for this comedy special. Obviously, he's done other ones, but one word for this comedy special, and that's just genius. People people said, well, after they saw this one, they was like, man, this dude right here... (laughs) Is like the fact that he's like since Netflix has been doing comedy specials, he done done like what six of them, right? Like he just he he drop a Netflix comedy special, and just keep on like dropping them. You like, damn, this boy, he, where, where does he keep on getting this new ass material? But hey, Dave Chappelle comes with it. So yeah, sticks and stones. You probably guys are probably since Netflix is so popular, you probably have all seen that. But uh, if you haven't, that's definitely one you got to check out. Number three on my list. Dave Chappelle, Sticks and Stones, came out last year, 2019. All right, we're down to the last two. Last two on my list. And I know everybody got a whole bunch of shit that they thinking like, oh, man, like, I wonder if, you know, is this that going to be, is it going to be delirious? You know what I'm saying? Is it, it going to be George Carlin? Like, you thinking about all type of shit right now. <laughs> you you all over the place. So let me go ahead and just kind of, you know, put y'all out y'all misery and let y'all know exactly what my, you know, top two is. Top two on my list. One of my favorite stand-up comedians of all time. Matter of fact, my favorite, like, active. My favorite active stand-up comic right now. Like, I don't think nobody is fucking with this dude in terms of right now. Every time he hits the stage, it's a dissertation for me. It's 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 it's, it's class. He's teaching class. He's a professor. You know what I'm saying? He's he's perform he's he's performing. It's a lecture. You know what I'm saying? Like at a college, like you just need to sit your ass down, take out some paper, and take notes. And that's how this dude is when he's performing. Mr. Chris Rock, 1996. Bring the pain. That 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 he's done a whole bunch of specials as well. He's done a there, there can be like a million specials on here. Honorable mention, you know, kill the messenger, bigger and blacker. You know what I'm saying? I can put a whole bunch of them, but bring the pain. That was the one that solidified Chris Rock as like like one of the greatest stand up comedians of our generation. Definitely my generation. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You call them all time if you want. But definitely, you know, one of the best of our generation. Bring the Pain did that for him. He had already, you know, just kind of, he had been, you know, Saturday Night Live. He had, you know, been off of there. You know what I'm saying? He went to Living Color for a season. A lot of people don't know. <laughs> he uh, left Saturday Night Live for Living Color. Then Living Color got canceled. So after that, he's like, damn, I got to go. I got to find me another job. So 
he started writing and he started, you know, going back to what he does best. And that's stand up comedy. And man, dropped Bring the Pain. And hey, what, he, Chris Rock in Bring the Pain did one of the one of the one of the um, most classic touchiest bits of all time when he talked about how he hate black people. I mean, by how he hate niggas, but he love black people. He said he love black people, but he hate niggas. And man, hey, I, I heard from you know we, we a lot of people laughed and all of that, but I saw um I saw a television show that talked about how that shit didn't go well, like everywhere he went. He went to Oakland and tried to perform that shit, and man, it was almost a riot up in there. So this dude was another fearless comedian who don't give a damn what you think about his comedy. You know what I'm saying? He gonna say what the hell he wanna say. You just saw Chris Rock's monologues at the Oscars and all that. Now, Chris Rock don't give a damn. If Chris Rock write it down and he think it's funny, then damn it, he going to try it. And he don't care what the room thinks. And that wound up being, like I said, one of the most classic, most fearless bits ever. Because, you know, it would have been tough to get in front of people and talk about how you, you know what I'm saying, like love black people but hate niggas. You know what I'm saying? But guess what? You understood you understood exactly what the hell he was talking about. You know what I'm saying? Especially when he broke the bit down. So that bit came from 1996's Bring the Pain. And it was, without a doubt, Chris Rock's best. To, to me. To me. It was his best special. And it's number two on my list. All right, let's take a let's let's let's, let's take a break. Let's take let, 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 I don't want to say a break, but let's take a let's take a a, a, a breath. That's what I really should have said. Let's take a breath uh, because hey, I didn't I didn't I didn't give you nine. I didn't give you nine up to this point. I'm gonna go ahead and recap the nine, and then I'm gonna give y'all what my number one one is after that, and then you know what I'm saying just kind of give y'all you know why it's number one and all that good stuff. So uh, as we're taking a breath, I'll just kind of recap. Number 10, Whoopi Goldberg's Direct from Broadway. Came out in 1985. Classic stuff. You got to check it out if you haven't seen it. Number 9, like I told y'all, Jamie Foxx, Straight from the Foxhole. One of my classic favorites. I probably still got the VHS tape somewhere around my house. And I still got a damn VCR somewhere too. So I might dust it off one day and watch it since I did this list. Dropped in 1993, right after his Living Color fame. And uh, classic stuff. Number eight, Louis C.K. Shameless, 07. Very funny stuff from a very funny, fearless comedian. Number seven, the greatest of all time, Richard Pryor, live on the Sunset Strip, 1982. This happened after his accident, remember, where he could have been dead. Richard Pryor could have been done from that from that accident, but instead he decided to get well and then get back on stage and talk about all of the shit that happened to him in terms of his accident. Turned his pain into laughs. Unbelievable. Number six, rest in peace, Patrice O'Neill. Elephant in the room. Dropped it in 2011. One of those specials where, like a comedian, like I said, first of all, I love him. And like I say, he changed my uh, you know comedic perspective on everything. But this particular night, he was on fire. And we're so we're, we're we're privileged to have him leave leave us with this special number six elephant in the room. Number five, original kings of comedy: Steve Harvey, Bernie Mac, Cedric the Entertainer, D.L. Hughley. Like I said, probably some of the funniest funniest shit I've like for these four guys to come together and say, "Hey, we don't you know we we're better together than we would be you know uh, apart." I thought it was ingenious to get Spike Lee to direct it and then put it in the movie theater. Hey, one of the biggest comedy tours of all time. Number four, Eddie Murphy Raw. Dropped in 87. Comic rock star. He proved why he was such a comic rock star that night. That night he did. He performed in front of that audience and did Eddie Murphy Raw. When he could have just stayed off of the comedy, you know, off of the you know, stand-up comedy stage. Because he was such a big movie star at the time. You know, after Beverly Hills Cop and 48 Hours, Beverly Hills Cop 2 and Trading Places. Like, he didn't need to come back to the to the, to the the um, stand-up comedy um, stage. But he did. And in my opinion, was better than Delirious. So, Eddie Murphy Raw, number four. 
Number three, Dave Chappelle, Sticks and Stones. Dave Chappelle, Sticks and Stones. You guys have seen it. Like the new Netflix craze. Won a comedy Grammy for it recently. Some of the most fearless material you'll ever hear. Dave Chappelle, number three, Sticks and Stones. And number two, I just gave y'all Chris Rock, Bring the Pain. Hey, it speaks for itself. He definitely brought the pain that night. Chris Rock, Bring the Pain. He dropped that one in 1996. And I thought that was the best comedy special in terms of all of his. And um, it lands at number two on my list. All right, without further ado, my number one stand-up comedy special of all time. And it's really, you know, it's, it's a no-brainer for me. It's the first comedy special I ever seen. And the reason why that is, is because it's probably the first comedy special ever. It's it's the first comedy special in terms of, you know, what, what we see today as a comedy special. Like, you see a comedian come out, he's got a mic stand, and he, you know, he's got a, you know, stool, and probably got a little water out there, and he's got, you know, and he's got a whole audience, and it's just him standing on stage, and he's about to give you, like, an hour, hour to have, like, an hour plus of stand-up comedy. You hadn't seen that before this comedy special, and it's funny that nobody really thought about it, doing it, until they decided to film this, because he was so amazing on this particular night. But on this particular night, it was a Patti LaBelle concert. A lot of people don't know that, but it was a Patti LaBelle concert, and they just decided to have this guy perform, do stand-up, you know, that particular night. And you talking about white hot, not red hot, white hot. I'm talking about motherfucking like like volcano lava white hot. That's what he was on this particular night. Once again, the only guy that's on my list twice, the greatest of all time in terms of stand-up comedy, Richard Pryor, live in concert. The like I said, like he the, the greatest of all time. And on this particular night, uh, Sunset Strip was amazing. Like I said, because of what he did in terms of you know coming back out after his horrific accident. But this was Richard Pryor in 1978. So this was just kind of him, you know, at the height of his you know he had, you know his show got canceled in '77. But he had already done a whole lot of stuff. He was the king of comedy, like in '78. And, you know, they, like I said, they, they had been doing TV, they had been doing movies, but nobody had done anything where they just said, I'm going to get on stage and, like, perform, like, for a whole damn crowd of people. And he did that at this Patti LaBelle concert, and they recorded it. And ever since, people have been doing stand-up comedy specials. And don't think for one minute, if you haven't seen it, don't think for one minute that I'm picking it number one. Because of that, don't think that I'm saying hey, this is the this is the special that everybody's chasing. No, I'm not saying it because what? Watch it, watch it from beginning to end. And if he don't have you like crying tears, then hey, like, our 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 comedy opinions are just different. But 1978's Richard Pryor live in concert was without a doubt the funniest damn stand-up comedy special I've ever seen. He had bits in there like the heart attack. Like like the motherfucking heart attack talking to you uh, about killing his car, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? With his woman, he had you know talking about like chasing the, the dog, chasing the boy. He got the low running and, and outran the and outran the dog. Like you know what I'm saying? The monkeys. I'm talking about this comedy special. And like this was the comedy special I used to take down to my friends. House when I was young, like I said, like shit, it's 1980 when we watching this special. I wasn't even supposed to be watching this special, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I had a VHS tape of it. I used to take it down to my friend's house. And we used to just sit in there like as young dudes watching Richard Pryor live in concert. So, without a doubt, that's my number one comedy special of all time. Fight me about this shit. Fight me about my list, damn it. I know some of y'all go, oh, man, you ain't had George Carlin on there. You ain't had no Rodney Dangerfield. You only got one woman on there. You only got one white person on there. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody always fuck with your list. But, hey, the best thing to do when you have a problem with somebody else's list is what? Make your damn own, right? So, y'all make your own on y'all's podcast. And then, hey, we can compare We can compare lists. No, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm. 
I'm just, you know, getting at y'all. But to, to, to be totally honest with y'all, like I said, I would love to hear some, some, um, you know, some comments, some criticisms. Uh, you know, if you agree, and you know, just basically, you know, what I'm saying, like, tell me what you, tell me what you dug. If you dug any of these specials, if you didn't dig any of these specials, like I would, I would love to hear it, man. Indeed. Well, like I said, man, that's pretty much, you know, the, this episode, this go around. I just wanted to, you know kind of like I said do something to close out um this season this season season two like I told y'all we you know this season two episode 11 I had 11 episodes in season one I had 11 episodes in season two y'all uh just definitely mess with me in season three because like I told y'all I got some some heavy hitting comedians that's gonna be doing the pod so y'all are gonna definitely love it this is the only audio podcast from the perspective of an up-and-coming comedian up-and-coming comedian that is me so yeah, man, I'm out there, man. Y'all follow me on all the good stuff. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'm on all that stuff, man. Like I said, give me some compliments. Give me some comments about my list. If you fill in the list, if you wasn't filling the list, you know what I'm saying? Just kind of keep me posted. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here, man. Thank y'all for everything. And like I said, I look forward to seeing y'all again in season, or should I say, hearing from y'all and y'all hearing from me in season three. Y'all take care, be good to yourselves, and be good to each other. Peace out.